Banner Children's, we've got pediatric care covered for Arizona families. Anderson is a very, very lovable baby. He's probably my most mellow baby, oh. which is surprising. He loves to laugh. He just, oh, he's just laid back. He just will lay there, play with his toys. He just, you know, he loves laughing at his siblings and just being happy. Um, I went into my um, OB's office for what I thought was a regular checkup. I was measuring a little bit larger than I had the entire pregnancy, so my doctor decided just to do an ultrasound to see how big Anderson was going to be. And it was during that ultrasound that pretty much our lives changed. We found out that Anderson was going to be born with a birth defect called congenital diaphragmatic hernia. Congenital diaphragmatic hernia is a congenital anomaly of the lack of separation between the abdominal cavity and the chest cavity. Which meant that all his organs, well a lot of his abdominal organs were up into his chest cavity. There's a hole in his diaphragm which allowed them to go up into his chest cavity and his heart was pushed on the wrong side of his body. There, I had no clue anything was wrong. It was a pretty standard pregnancy, um, nothing out of the ordinary. I never even thought that there was going to be a problem. Uh, in the early days before uh, we had ultrasound, these babies would be born uh, with expected normal delivery and have immediate life-threatening breathing difficulties. Um, what they did when he was born is there's the whole NICU team ready waiting for him. One of the NICU doctors right when he was born took him immediately. Kevin was still able to cut the cord but they took him in immediately and intubated him right away because they didn't want him to breathe on his own because that could actually make things worse. They didn't want his lungs to, um, his lungs were already compromised and squished with all the organs. They didn't want him to try to inflate and it would just make things worse. The first major concern is, are the lungs grown enough to survive outside the uterus? The lungs um, uh, have very little primary purpose before birth. They're growing, waiting until we have to be born and then they have to inflate and do those things. And babies with diaphragmatic hernia um, we have various parameters that we can measure on the size of the lung to try to predict which babies will do better than others. However, every baby with this congenital anomaly is completely unique at birth on the magnitude of support they might require. He was in the NICU for 28 days, which was actually kind of short for somebody with congenital diaphragmatic hernia if they make it. When we fix them to make them like the rest of us to survive, they still have some ongoing issues related to how they formed for all that length of time inside a mom. That's just the beginning, is moving the organs back is just the first hurdle. Uh, so far he has severe dysphagia, which is a swallowing disorder. He has reflux, severe reflux. He has a feeding tube now because he aspirates when he eats, which he's done for several months now that we know about. They can have difficulties with swallowing, keeping the formula and other things in their stomach, and not having it go up their esophagus and into their windpipe. They have to be thick because it helps um, anything, any regular liquids will just go into his lungs. And so if it's thicker, then it helps just kind of glide down his throat instead of going into the wrong area. Children with diaphragmatic hernia can be identified uh, for essentially their whole life as having limitations in lung function. But does that change their life? Usually not. Most of these children, if they can get out of the neonatal period, are going to be able to go to regular school and do well. We're very hopeful for the future. We're very hopeful that, you know, hopefully with some of these minor things that he could outgrow it, but there's always a chance of reherniation, which is our biggest fear, is that he'll reherniate and have to go back into the hospital. What we try to do by meeting parents early in the pregnancy is identify our role as a partner with them in the love and care of their child. We all know what we want the dream to be of having this child, but this baby has a congenital anomaly that is causing us all to adjust our dream and meet the needs of the baby. 
And so the main purpose is trying to create a professional trusting relationship as you work with a family to respond to the needs of their child. We may see that he can't keep up with kids his own age, but you know, if that's the biggest obstacle he has when he grows up, then I don't think he's doing too bad.